ultimately, I don't think we can trust either of the two main parties as far as we can throw them. Right, well, shall we turn those two chaps around then? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that how we're doing this? <laughs> any, any coalition deal that the Lib Dems go into, they've got to get it past a special conference and two thirds of the members that turn up have got to accept it. Why we're talking about cutting tax on low wages so that nobody on minimum wage will pay any income tax, which means that people get to spend more of their money rather than having it take away and then maybe having to beg for it back in tax credits. It's why we're going heavily on things like the pupil premium, which is putting more money into schools to help support kids from backgrounds that are more deprived, because we know that a bright kid from a deprived back background is very quickly going to get overtaken by a less gifted child who's got rich parents. If you're talking about return on investment, a bit of money put to, to help that kid is going to put, take them somewhere that they would never maybe have gone for themselves. You know, and it's not going to be because we've artificially lifted them up, it's just because we've taken away the shackles that are keeping them down. It's really important that we properly fund the NHS and the Lib Dems have said we will give the NHS the extra £8 billion that it's asking for and we've said you know, we know how we'll pay for it. We will put extra taxes on uh, profits from stocks and shares, we will remove some of the higher rate tax reliefs on people who have very lucrative private pensions. You know, and that, that money can go into the NHS and will help everybody. And you, you used to talk in the 80s certainly about trickle-down economics. Well, sometimes it works, a lot of the time it doesn't. What really does work is grassroots up economics. If you improve the potential and improve the life chances of people who start off with very humble backgrounds, that really does build. You know, that really does build and change from whole communities that are stuck on benefits or have very poor academic and educational outcomes into healthy, vibrant communities where people know what they can do, know what they can be, and they have the power to make it happen. I'm <laughs> um, looking at your trousers, you've got expensive taste. I've got, well, you, you might think that I've got TK Maxx taste is what I've got. <laughs> there's nothing, nothing expensive about these. They're, they're bright and they're garish, but they're not expensive. Uh, yeah, I'm, an MP salary would be a significant pay rise for me, so I'm not worried about surviving on that. I was speaking to um, a Tusk candidate this morning right. who said that uh, really no one needs to earn more than £100,000 a year. What would you say is an obscene salary? Uh, I think it depends what you do for it. All the time that we're focusing on the people at the top who are, may or may not be earning way, way too much, there are millions of people at the bottom who are earning nowhere near enough. If you halve the salaries of the top 1%, whoever they are, then by itself that does nothing to improve the lives of, pe of, of the, the bottom 1% or the bottom any percent. You've got to really focus, focus first and foremost on what can you do for the poorest and the people who need help most. And then you think about how you pay for it. And a really good way to pay for anything that you want to do, do is, yes, to stick an extra tax on obscene salaries, to increase capital gains tax, to tax empty properties, to tax mansions, to all of these things. But if, if your first and foremost motivation is to just go after the people at the top, then I think you've probably forgotten what we all, all got into this for. Yeah, Nigel, uh, this, is, this is so surreal. Yeah. Nigel, yes. you've said some very unpleasant things oh about, about very vulnerable people, about immigrants and about people with HIV and about poor people and just ha so how do you sleep at night is it the beer are you just so tanked up by the end of the day that you're knocked unconscious or, uh, oh, hello. <laughs> i actually quite like nicola sturgeon so i'm we're, we're gonna we're gonna go in we're gonna go in for a self nicola sturgeon selfie there that's good well, i like that one very much. <laughs> don't do the voice Please don't do the voice. <laughs> any any coalition deal must involve iron brew in some in some way. It's a good good stuff. Some um, of the things some of the things that you're you're talking about you make a lot of sense, but I think you're give far me an example. Give you're me an far example, too, you are far too interested though in centralising power. I think centralising the police forces in Scotland 
it was a terrible idea. I think we need to have more local control over all sorts of things, over police, over public services. I definitely, going back to Hackney, I definitely do not think that we should have police routinely armed with tasers and never mind with firearms walking around on our streets. I think we need to remember that the police work for us and we sh they, should be, they, they should ultimately be worried about what we think of them, not necessarily us one running around terrified of what they're going to do to us. And in parts of Hackney and some communities that is a really big issue. Do you like a kebab, Nicola? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yes. Do you like salt beef? What do you reckon to salt I beef? I love it, yes. Gotta, lo gotta love a bit of salt beef. South. If you're watching this and you're in Hackney South and you know a good place to get a nice salt beef bagel, let me know, yeah? You come, come for the markets, come for the plays on at the Hackney Empire Theatre, come for the picture house, come for the, the Burberry outlet. Spend, spend some of that Scottish oil money that you're always talking about down, down the Burberry factory. But don't, for, don't forget we've got lots of wonderful independent designers as well and they need the money as well.